Did you make this? Yeah. It's gonna be a place where only the things you want to happen. What happened? We can totally build a place like that. If the children... It's all yours. You're the owner of this world. This is my review for Where the Wild Things Are, released in 2009. As I said in my preview show uh, a while back now, I was really looking forward to this film. I never read the book uh, as a child or anything like that. My interest for the film was purely based on the trailer. I thought Spike Jones was an interesting choice and a brilliant director who could really bring something interesting to a kids film. Um, I thought the direction looked great, really engaging and beautiful shots. Um, I even went as far as to say, I think this could be a classic, which I now regret saying, not because the movie was bad or anything, it's just a stupid thing to say based on the trailer. Um, so here we go. I have to say for me, Where the Wild Things was a mixed bag. I will say though, I am looking forward to re-watching it on DVD, as though I have some issues with it, which I'll get to later. I do feel perhaps they would fade on a rewatch. I think the film started very well for me. I like the stuff about Max being a bit of a loner and being upset by his sister and her friends. Um, the direction in this scene was great, as was the very opening scene uh, where we see Max running around the house with the camera keeping up with him. So the film straight away delivered on that frantic, exciting cinematography promised from the trailer. There's a great shot where Max um, had made like an igloo type thing and during a snowball fight he jumps into the igloo and the camera, I think either the camera followed him or it was there in the igloo before he got in so you could see him jump in which was an interesting choice of shot showing that Spike Jones could place the camera anywhere and would allow for this kind of freeing filmmaking. So yeah, great start. Um, however, as Max got to the place um, of the wild things, for me the film took a weird turn. Um, one, I never got the impression that Max's world at home was bad enough for him to run away. I think I would have preferred myself uh, more time spent on the pre-wild things, um, Max's kind of pre-wild things world. Uh, once he got there though, the wild things themselves had their moments, they were you know, fairly funny at times. And look, they looked great, and some of the moments of the fights were visually interesting. However, the general tone um, took a dive into the downbeat and depressing, especially Carol, voiced by uh, James Gandolfini. Um, I also wasn't sure what they were going for in terms of the meaning of the film. The main thing I got from it was that he left home, went to a place where this annoying, all these annoying creatures were, who nagged and whined the whole time, got fed up on my own. I wasn't sure what they were trying to teach. Was it that everybody has problems, They're, that no world is perfect? I'm not sure. I just didn't dig the general tone during these parts. So, all in all, I think a good visual style was let down by just, I don't know, a really downbeat, depressing kind of tone. Perhaps it was the mood I was in, and as I say, I will, I will re-watch it. I think I can see it going up in my estimation, uh, but as it stands, I was a little let down by this film in terms of the tone, but still brilliant visually. Put the holes in the trees. This is Judith. You don't really need to know me. Kind of a downer. 